What's good, Josh Boy Ross? Back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE Toilet Break matches. Now, for those who don't know, it's kind of obvious what a WWE Toilet Break match is. That is a match that, as soon as you see it, a lot of times you, the the promo or the promo package for it, or just the idea of these two particular wrestlers that you don't care to see wrestle happen on the show or on monday night raw on smackdown whatever the case may be you automatically tuned out because you just don't care you don't either you don't care about the wrestlers involved you don't care about the story that's being quote unquote told so you check out and we've seen that a lot over the years just matches where you just like yep yeah, i'm about to go use the restroom maybe get some snacks get something to drink but not actually watch the match so we're gonna check out some of these instances where you know wwe thought they had a banger on their hand and nope it was just a toilet break match and we're just gonna see if we agree with what wrestlemania uh deems as a toilet break match from the past so appreciate our love support let's get right into this one man wwe <laughs> matches worthy of a bathroom break be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos number 10 ronda rousey versus Shayna baszler SummerSlam. oh that's easy at least the bill with some the bill was abrupt because it came out of nowhere. It had a little bit of something, but the match, no one cared. 2023. The WWE product was red hot by the time they arrived at SummerSlam in 2023, yet there was one match fans had zero desire to see unfold. When Ronda Rousey vs. Shayna Baszler in an MMA rules match was about to commence, fans left to use the bathroom, which was a clear sign that the match had the weakest and most uninspired build on the entire card. Mm -hmm. Footage of fans leaving quickly surfaced on social media, and the fans were right to use the match as their chosen bathroom break, yeah. as the match was incredibly lackluster and received overwhelmingly negative reviews, both from fans and critics. Number 9, Triple H. Bro, like, literally, people were just quiet. We watched it live on stream. Easily the worst match of the night. It was just like, all right, now that she beat Ronda, let's do something with Shayna. They didn't really do nothing with Shayna. Versus Scott Steiner, Royal Rumble 2023. The idea of a world title match on a big four pay-per-view being a bathroom break match is it's a crazy. wild notion. Yet for the 2003 Royal Rumble, WWE delivered a world title match that was so abysmal that the match didn't even belong on Raw or SmackDown. Initially, fans were excited when Scott Steiner mm -hmm. re-signed with WWE in 2002. However, when he wrestled Triple H at the aforementioned pay-per-view, it was evident that Steiner was a shell of his former self. Steiner's in-ring output had regressed to such an extent that he couldn't even deliver a passable match. The match featured botch after botch and mm -hmm. the crowd couldn't care less about the awful action. The match was a huge detriment to the Raw brand as the match was the brand's top billing for the pay-per-view. And it didn't help that the match came before an all-time classic between Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit for the WWE title. The Angle vs. Benoit match was SmackDown's top match for the show mm -hmm. and the sheer quality of the match was a sign that SmackDown was a show to watch at the time. And if fans invested their time in watching the SmackDown product, they were going to see matches of a 5-star caliber. In relation to the Triple H vs Steiner matchup, WWE made the call to have Steiner win via DQ, which was done so WWE could boldly book a rematch the following month at No Way Out. <laughs> Whilst this rematch was somewhat better, the crowd had firmly decided that Steiner wasn't someone they should care about, so they actively turned on him in the featured contest. Number 8, Rose Yeah, Smackdown, back in that time, if you wanted to watch some good wrestling, that's the show you was going to watch. Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal, Money in the Bank 2018. I forgot about this. For the this. majority of Roman Reigns' run as a babyface in WWE, the company struggled with his presentation and booking. In the summer of 2018, mm. WWE made the call to have Reigns feud with Jinder Mahal. Although Mahal was a former WWE champion, there was zero interest whatsoever. I in legit forgot feud, about this feud. The segments between the two were often met with utter silence. The payoff to the infamous feud would come at the 2018 Money in the Bank event. Why was the match this a was thing? Met with a disinterested crowd and a crowd that just wanted oh, to see the WWE yeah. get to the next match as soon Not as possible. Not the beach ball. The worst thing about the match was that it was one of the longest matches on the entire show, coming in at 15 minutes. This was far too long, and it would have made more logical sense to include Reigns in the annual Money in the Bank matchup instead of a pay per view matchup that nobody was pushing to see. Number seven. Yeah, I, I forgot that was even a thing, so I'm glad I don't remember that. Awesome. Awesome. Pat Patterson versus <clears throat> Gerald Briscoe, King of the Ring 2000. 
In June of 2000, WWE were moving away from the more controversial elements of the Attitude Era, and whilst the product was still edgy, there was far more focus on the in-ring product, and 2000 was a year of outstanding matches across the board. Unfortunately, WWE had one major exception to this, as for whatever reason, at the 2000 King of the Ring pay-per-view, they booked two legends in Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe to wrestle in an evening gown match for the hardcore yeah. title. This match was the last... Just... Just... <sighs> Mm -hmm. I'm glad we don't have to deal with this shit anymore. People like to live in the past with rose tinted glasses when it comes to like WWE and wrestling as a whole. And oh, everything was great back then. It wasn't. I promise you, you go back and look at some of these old pay per views, some of these old shows, not everything was good on there. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that was definitely restroom break worthy. We like to pretend like everything was great in attitude and verging right into the ruthless aggression. No, it wasn't. Even as a kid, it wasn't. But, you know, that comes with any era of wrestling full length match of both of their respective careers. And it was met with a crowd that really wanted to be elsewhere. The two legends wore women's clothing and proceeded to perform mistimed, unfunny spots for about three minutes. The only time the crowd remotely came alive was when the incredibly popular Crash Holly hijacked the match. The match should have never made it onto a pay-per-view card, and the match only served to make the dastardly Vince McMahon laugh backstage. There we go. Number 6, Bianca Belair vs Alexa Bliss, Royal Rumble 2023. Since the WWE introduced the two Royal Rumble format in 2018, they have continued to have issues with matches set between the two Rumbles struggling to engage the fans. Mm -hmm. This is completely understandable as the fans are there to see the two respective Rumble matches, and there is of course going to be a lack of interest in any matches outside of the two Rumbles and potentially the world title match. This was on full display in 2023 when Bianca Belair wrestled Alexa Bliss and the match came right in the middle of the two Rumble matches. The crowd couldn't wait for it to be over, which was a shame as Bianca and Bliss are two Damn, of the top female I, I didn't even WWE, remember this match, to be honest. it was the right time or place for the matchup. The crowd without a doubt influenced the quality of the match as the match was awkward, slow and lifeless. Number 5, Baron Corbin vs. Mad Cat Moss, WrestleMania Backlash 2022. Oh, man. Spot on a pay-per-view match card just before the main event can be a problematic spot to be in. The fans are eagerly anticipating the pay-per-view main event, and they are usually prone to using the match as a bathroom break or getting some last-minute refreshments before mm -hmm. the final matchup. For the WrestleMania Backlash pay-per-view in 2022, WWE placed Baron Corbin vs. Mad Cat Moss just before the main event, and it was witnessed by a crowd who wanted no part of it. The feud <laughs> itself didn't have a ton of interest, yeah. the match was underwhelming and a TV match at the very best. Number 4, Roman Reigns vs. Shane McMahon, Super Showdown 2019. WWE's overall product in 2019 wasn't in a strong place. Attendance and ratings were down, and mm -hmm. WWE were refusing to deliver any compelling storylines on Raw and SmackDown. They were also obsessed with booking Shane McMahon in a prominent heel mm -hmm. role on the show, and this dominated screen time week after week. WWE would book McMahon to face their top guy Roman Reigns at the Super Showdown pay per view I think I remember this vaguely. which was set for Saudi Arabia. During this time, WWE booked the Saudi shows like novelty spectacles, and this resulted in fans failing to engage with the Reigns vs. McMahon matchup. I think I remember this, it was yeah. expected that Reigns would defeat McMahon in convincing fashion. After all, McMahon wasn't a full-time wrestler, and Reigns was the face of the company. Yeah. However, in shocking fashion, McMahon uh, would win a yeah. total dud of a match following interference I, I from Drew McIntyre. WWE had allowed McMahon to defeat Reigns on pay-per-view, and this highlighted everything wrong with the WWE. I remember that. Yeah, that was a dark time. Dark time. Just dark times. <laughs> WWE product at the time. Number three, Fandango and Summer Rae take on the great Carly and Natalia, Helena Cell to Just the name of that. Everyone involved in this. Bathroom break. Maybe even a little snack break on top of that. Like go to the bathroom, wash your hands, come back get some snacks maybe you know what i'm saying maybe it's a snack that you got to warm up maybe a snack you got to put in the oven you know 2013 b-level pay-per-view events are traditionally filled with filler matches these filler matches aren't exactly blockbuster matches yet they should have some weight to them and should absolutely have a reason to be on a pay-per-view match card 
For the 2013 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, WWE was struggling on putting together a match card, so they decided to book Fandango and Summer Rae vs The Great Carly and Natalya. This match didn't deserve its place on the card, and you could literally hear a pin drop during the match. Fans had either left their seats to use the bathroom or decided to have a brief nap until the next match started. <laughs> the match lasted almost five minutes and the match was an example of why the traditional WWE pay-per-view model was struggling to survive. Number 2 Big Show vs Big Boss Man Armageddon 1999 When Stone Cold went away from WWE in late 99, WWE made the controversial call to crown the Big Show as a mm -hmm. new WWE Champion. Big Show was still finding his feet as a babyface in WWE and fans weren't fully invested in anything he was doing, so this subsequently made the call to have him win the WWE title during one of the WWE's most popular periods was a truly bizarre booking move. Nevertheless, WWE proceeded with the title reign and when Big Show's first pay-per-view defense was announced, fans yeah. were less than thrilled. He would defend against the Big Boss Man. Boss Man, whilst talented, wasn't remotely credible as a main event star in late 1999, so fans knew that the Big Show would easily retain, and this influenced the hype heading into the match. Mm -hmm. The match wasn't booked to main event the show, which could have been a sign that WWE had a lack of faith in the matchup. They knew that this wasn't strong enough for a WWE title match on pay-per-view. The match itself was met with crickets from the audience, and the crowd <laughs> reacted to the WWE Champion as if he was a completely unknown talent. The match was basically a squash match that was better suited for Raw, and the call to book the match on pay-per-view was one of the more nonsensical booking calls of the Attitude Era. And number 1, Kane vs The Great Khali, WrestleMania 23 When WWE formally announced in 2007 that one of the matches for WrestleMania 23 would feature I Kane vs The Great Khali, instant dread was shared across the entire fan base. Yeah, I was just like, what? Oh, okay. Love me some game. But I was just like, all right, bro. Okay. It, we really doing this? I guess. The match on paper sounded horrendous, and it had the potential to be one of the worst matches in WWE history. There wasn't even morbid curiosity in this match, as Carly didn't exactly have a stellar track record in top matches, and Kane was never going to get to carry Carly to a good match. Yeah. The two former world champions had zero chemistry, and the match wouldn't have even been acceptable for a WWE superstars taping. Carly even managed to get the win, which completely deflated a crowd that already couldn't care less. Yeah. The only bright spot of the match saw Kane delivering a body slam to Carly, mm -hmm. and whilst it was great to see the former champion involved in the spot, ultimately Kane should have been in the mix with other top main event names on the 2007 Money in the Bank ladder match. And they have it yeah, from 10 W. Yep. Yep. Hey, it happens. Sometimes you end up with uh, some restroom break matches. Lately, though. We haven't been seeing it on, on the, the recent PLEs for the past few years. For the most part, there's been a, a, something that you can enjoy in each and every match that it's not restroom break worthy, you know? So I'm glad that you can say confidently for the past few years, especially in this uh, the Triple H era of uh, uh, producing these, you know, these shows, you haven't really seen too many um, bathroom break matches, man. So comment down below. Let me know the most infamous bathroom break match you can like remember. Like as soon as they announced this match was gonna happen for you, you you just checked out. Hey, I'm about to go to the restroom, and you didn't even have to go to the restroom. You was just like, I gotta go, because you you just didn't even want to see it. Let me know down below what match that was for you. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150k, and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking to me. See you next one. Peace.